So welcome, good evening. My name is Andy Dolan. I'm the Vice President of Marketing at Rewalk Robotics. Uh, we're actually gonna jump right into tonight's program, the content, because we have a, a good agenda of information up front, but more importantly, uh, really thrilled to have our guest speaker, Jeremy Romero, uh, to share his story. So I wanna get to, uh, to his content as soon as possible. So we'll jump right in. Uh, first, we'll give a brief overview of the Rewalk device. You know, what is an exoskeleton? Uh, then we'll discuss a bit about the growing rewalker community, we call it. These are the people who use the devices. You know, we'll talk about how many are out there, some insight into how they're using it, and as importantly, how they obtain their devices. What's the process to do that? Uh, and then third, you know, I mentioned again, uh, Jeremy will be joining us. Uh, Jeremy is a retired Corrales police officer uh, who obtained his device after being injured while serving his community. Uh, he was actually in a, in a high-speed car accident and suffered an L1 injury. And after his accident, he and his care team, his medical team, chose to make Rewalk a part of his healthcare plan and also of his life. So uh, particularly important to hear his story for the firsthand experience. Uh, and I'll start with a bit about exoskeletons and uh, watch uh, as a company, I'm sorry, as a company, our mission is to fundamentally change the quality of life for individuals with lower limb disability through the creation and development of market leading technologies. So uh, a quick story on our founding, our founder, Dr. Ahmet Gopher, a prolific inventor and entrepreneur, actually sustained a spinal cord injury himself. Uh, and as people who you know, think at a high level and inventors like him often do, he started to think of, you know, what can I do differently and, and what can I do to improve my situation? And really early on, he recognized that the human body is made to stand and walk for a number of reasons, psychosocial and health elements. Uh, and that was the founding of the Rewalk skeleton, exoskeleton. It was simply an inventor saying, there should be some element of this to my healthcare plan. And a little more about the Rewalk exoskeleton. And I'll press play in this video so you can see an experience of it. The gentleman rolls up in his wheelchair, transfers into the device, and he's ambulating. So by definition, an exoskeleton is a device that provides structural support, and the rewalk has powered hip and knee motion to enable individuals with spinal cord injury to stand upright, walk, turn, climb and descend stairs, and as importantly, transfer in and out of the device, uh, similar to how you would transfer into other types of chairs. Uh, so one key element here is, is intended for people with spinal cord injury, uh, and that is incomplete and complete. That's a common question we get. The device is designed to walk at a certain speed that is preset by the physical therapist who programs the device, and the device will provide enough power to get to that walking speed. So someone with a motor complete injury or someone who needs full function, the device will provide uh, a certain amount of power to reach that speed. For an incomplete injury, if the person has some ability to power and provide some strength along with the device, the device will sense that and back off and allow that person to get some exercise effect. So it does work for both the incomplete and complete. And we look for generally mid thoracic or below that way the person can operate uh, the crutches and the upper body mechanism. So a little more about rewalk and you know, the title slide, we call this a history of credibility. Uh, rewalk is actually the first device to be researched at this level in the VA system and some other leading healthcare clinics in the United States and Europe. Also the first to obtain FDA clearance, the first to be placed in a home setting, and the first to be uh, paid for by, by a private insurer. So this long history gives us a great learning background on how these devices work and how we can uh, support those who use them. So we do have a reimbursement support team uh, you'll hear actually a bit about Jeremy's story, how the Rewalk personnel helped him obtain his device, and certainly a service team. This is a team that can come to your house, uh, preventative maintenance on the device, and certainly if you have any issues, they can help address those issues and, and keep you walking. Uh, a quick note on the VA coverage policy. This is very important in the United States for U.S. veterans who have VA benefits. Uh, there is a policy they can receive these devices, and that includes injuries that would be related to the person's service, or even outside of service. So many veterans across the United States have sustained injuries after returning and retiring from service, they may be eligible for these devices. So in addition to the reimbursement support for private pay, we'd encourage any US veterans to reach us about potential to obtain one of these devices. Uh, in terms of training access, we do have 170 training clinic partners across the country. And this just means we can support you 
locally. We can find somewhere that can train you, somewhere you can get comfortable with the device and learn how to use it without having to travel uh, long distances in most areas. A key number, uh, and I think this may surprise some people, over 500 devices are in use. So while exoskeletons get looked at as being at the forefront of innovation, at the forefront of healthcare, there's actually a depth of history uh, and multi-year users like Jeremy who've proven the device and been using it for quite a while. Uh, Rewalk in particular, compared to some other exoskeletons, we say has the most natural gait. And we describe this as your legs have six joints. There's the hip, knee, and ankle. And, and there are some systems that address the hip and knee, but the ankle is actually a very key component for natural walking in terms of that heel toe motion. And with a variable resistance and adjustable resistance and range ankle system, we can adjust the device to more closely mimic the natural gait. Uh, I mentioned research, and this goes back to the credibility piece. Uh, research is basically uh, investigators studying your device, looking at its usability, looking at health outcomes, and all types of elements. We walk not only has a long clinical history, back to 2012 and even before in the VA system and some higher end clinics, but there's also an ongoing uh, massive multi-center study in the VA system where 160 people are enrolled, uh, a controlled study to test the at-home usage of these devices, uh, including uh, uh, quality of life benefits and other elements of, of care. So well-researched. But another important topic, durability. And the reason we're addressing that in particular tonight is it's a common question about new technology. Well, is it durable? Is it reliable? Uh, so I'll just show a slide here that has uh, a few images on it. And the folks in the top left, you'll see are completing marathons. So rewalkers have actually completed full 26 mile, uh, 26.2 mile marathons. Uh, you'll see both folks look like they've, uh, they're pretty exhausted here. They've gone through the races, but the device kept up with them quite literally every step of the way. So it's proved its durability through some rigorous experiences. Uh, 10Ks, 5Ks, we've had people who've walked over a million steps. They're using them at home uh, regularly. So we see this uh, high level testing as sort of proof beyond what we could do in a lab, what we can mimic in any environment that the devices have an element of durability. Uh, but more important than these amazing accomplishments and high-end experiences are that rewalkers are using these every day at home, at work, in their community. Here's actually a, a picture of Jeremy walking in New Mexico, just a long straight road. So he does this nearly daily, uh, he'll share his experience, but when you hear about the mileage he puts on the device, it really goes to speak to why we are so confident in the device, and more importantly, why the re-walkers who use them are so confident that they can leave their homes and walk these long distances and feel confident that the rewalk will support them. So without further ado, I'll uh, introduce uh, retired police officer Jeremy Romero, who can share his thoughts and experiences uh, with the device. And, and just a quick background on and Jeremy, who was injured, as I mentioned earlier, serving his community as a member of the Krauss Police Department, uh, an L1 fracture uh, sustained that left him with the uh, lower limb disability that sought him to seek the rewalk. Uh, he did return to work. It's this really inspirational and amazing story. Uh, I can say personally, I've got to know Jeremy well. He's one of the uh, strongest minded yet passionate people I probably have ever met and also physically stronger. So if there is someone who would tell you if your device is flimsy or not, uh, Jeremy would be the person. So it's uh, my pleasure to introduce you to Jeremy Romero. Good afternoon. Thank you, Andy. I uh, really appreciate you guys. Uh, first off, I'd really like to um, speak a little bit about the rewalk what it's uh done in the beginning stages as far as uh, initially when i was at uh, craig hospital um uh, in the research stage uh in about a month or two after uh, i was transferred there to uh, inglewood colorado i began to research many many different ways and uh, ways to get up and walk again uh, while at uh, craig hospital i observed many or a couple of different uh, uh, exoskeletons at the time uh, really had my eye out for the most durable being at the time I was a uh, 236 foot one I was really looking for a durable durable device that would kind of withstand uh, my body frame uh, really the rewalk really stood out to, stood out to me at the early stages 
Uh, that's when I began to research it on the computer and really saw a lot of uh, benefits that potentially I could have. I uh, then uh, gave all the information to my case manager at the time. I really didn't think it was going to really be something that was going to be a reality for me because of uh, uh, I didn't know what uh, as far as insurance is coverage at that time. Um, I gave the information to my case manager. Uh, she looked it over and she really looked at all the benefits that potentially this device would have. Uh, she gave that information to my doctor and within about a couple of months after me uh, leaving Craig Hospital, I was uh, set up for a test um, a trial at uh, Tier Memorial uh, Her uh, Herman in Houston, Texas. Uh, during that test phase uh, trial, I was determined that I was a, a, valuable, ca a valuable candidate for the rewalk. Uh, my case manager went up to went up to Houston, Texas, with me, uh, obtained all the information, brought it back to New Mexico, submitted the information to my doctor, and I believe within a couple of months' time, uh, my insurance uh, approved the device. Um, a short time later, I went back to Houston, Texas, um, to uh, get uh, outfitted with the device. I was there for approximately a month of of testing. Um, I then was. Uh, able to bring the d device home a short time later. Uh, since then, fast forward now four, four plus years, I average walking three to five miles a day. Uh, I use the device very, very vigorously. And I would use the term battle tested uh, because of the rigorous testing I do with this device. And I, it's, it's not only withstanded my use, but withstanded the continuous use of uh, four years of continuous uh, walking through different types of terrains. Uh, initially, I was real skeptical with the device as far as what type of benefits because my primary goal at the time was to get up and walk again. And that's kind of really at the low part of my uh, list of uh, with the device now. Early on within the first couple of weeks, I noticed a, a, a big drastic change in my bowel and bladder uh, from me cathing, uh, catheterization to four to six times a day. I went from four to six times a day uh, self-cathing to uh, zero times a day, currently present day. I don't self-cath. My, my bladder um, is uh, and pretty much normalized uh, four years plus years later with the continuous device. Also my bowel, it's probably about 75 to 85% back now. Uh, most recently, within the past couple months, I was able to do a bone density test after the bone density testing, uh, I got the test results back and I'm in normal ranges uh, of a, a person my age uh, walking, which I think that's uh, real, real positive for me. Not only with the bone density, I've been able to gain uh, normal uh, muscle mass uh, in my lower extremities, which I feel that's a big help as far as uh, reducing my, um, my likelihood of uh, pressure sores, which that's pretty big. Uh, to a person that's uh, a quadriplegic or paraplegic, that's pretty big. Uh, that's a big thing for me. Also, my overall mental state, uh, it's, it's really improved my mental state uh, tremendously, uh, being able to get up and walk again. Um, and with, with the conjunction of walking, I was taking many different types of nerve medications for nerve pain. Uh, my nerve pain was uncontrollable with the many different types of nerve medication. Uh, within that starting time frame when we taking uh, starting to use the rewalk and can continue to use the rewalk, I have a uh, zero nerve pain. I take no pain medications, no nerve medications, no medications whatsoever besides uh, multivitamins and uh, vitamin D3 and calcium. That's all I take, which I think that's a big help, not only uh, for me personally, uh, for uh, my body, but also uh, long-term care for uh, for my insurance, it's it's really saved them a, a dramatic amount of, uh, of 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 money uh, from from their side of me continuously going to the doctors because prior to the rewalk, I was constantly in and out of the doctors with urinary tract infections, uh, different types of pain medications, um, and that's really been a big big help. I feel for Yeah, and, uh, and Jeremy, we had a, a one or two people ask questions when they registered, so I'll ask you those now if that's okay, then, then uh, we might have a, a few others. Um, one actually did ask how much you use it. I think you sort of addressed that with the three to five 
you know, miles, which I think is, is you know, interesting number that, you know, many people of all, all abilities don't walk that much in a day. So, I, you know, it's certainly a high volume. So I'll expand on their question since I think you answered it. Um, is that on a, do you do that within a battery charge? How long are the batteries lasting you? Uh, initially, when I was gaining more weight, I would have to recharge the battery. But since I've lost weight with the continued use of walking, I'm able to do that very, very efficiently in one, one battery charge, which I think that's, that's pretty good. And at three to my, five miles, it, it, it's going to vary from, uh, uh, I guess I would say, the, the different types of weather, inclement weather that, that, that I have. I mean, there's some days I can walk three days, and there's some days I can walk six days. But I've also been able to, I guess, think outside the box when I have inclement weather and I can't walk. I'll utilize the rewalk as a standing frame inside my kitchen. Mm. So I'll be able to be standing upright for anywhere from two to three hours, standing up, watching TV, uh, just doing stuff upright uh, while the device is standing. So I'll, I guess I'll utilize it as a, as a standing frame too. So, so you regularly try to make it a part of your, your care. You, you, don't, you, don't, you try to keep it incorporated, even in inclement weather. It still has some use to you. Yes, I, 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 I definitely. And, uh, I was really uh, kind of whenever I was wasn't able to use the device, I was just I thought you know what there's I mean this thing can it, it it can stand so I just kind of had to think outside the box a little bit and also utilize right. it to stand and I've been been utilizing it for four plus years uh, standing as well so it's it it has a lot of uh, very very good benefits for me. Yeah, absolutely. And another question along the same lines. And I think it's interesting to ask the question this way was, do you, does using the device cause pain? And I'm, I'm thinking there, thinking in terms of all this high volume, multiple miles, you know, uh, I, I suppose the question is they don't want to cause more pain, but you've actually kind of commented on uh, a reduction. So what would you say to someone asking about, you know, does it, does it hurt? Does it make you sore? No, it, it, it's, the, it's, it's actually the exact opposite. I mean, because, I'm kind of really, I guess, an obsession with using it because I don't want to feel pain. And uh, all the many different nerve medications, I tried everything out on the market with no success. And uh, the pain was just debilitating. It would just leave me in a bed all day, just miserable. And once I started using the rewalk and noticed the, the dramatic pain reduction to went from a scale of a, a 10 being the worst to a zero being no pain at all, I went from a 10 to a zero. It's pretty addicting to continue to stay walking and have that motivation to stay walking because uh, once again, uh, I have no pain and, and, and not have pain for a, for a quadriplegic or a paraplegic, especially when I'm, I'm gonna emphasize the nerve pain uh, when you have, when you can eliminate that completely. Some people would most hopefully even reduce it by 15, 25, 50%, but with me, I was able to reduce it by 100%. Uh, that's why I just continue the use of it so much because I know what that pain feels like and I don't want nothing to do with that type of nerve pain. So that's why I continue to use it. No, that's, that's, that's very helpful. And I, you know, another question on your usage, uh, one was, you know, you live in a very warm area. Sometimes we're jealous up here in the Northeast, you get the sun a lot, <laughs> but uh, that also means hot days. And, you know, that picture we showed you walking down that long road, I'm sure it gets pretty warm. Uh, the question was, do you feel the device uh, uh, heats up or have you felt uh, any issues in warm weather? Because you certainly face a lot of that. No, and, and, I, and I just, I, I obviously with, with me, I do a lot of precautionary measures uh, with the device as much as I've walked. I put uh, uh, the laser temperature gauges on all the motor parts of the device and they're, they've all been for the four plus years, they've all been within normal ranges. I mean, they're not nothing as far as the moving parts of the device from the lower moving parts up into the up battery pack they've never been hot nothing nothing as far as as as, as any uh, concerns that i've that i've been able to notice and with that uh, that you brought up a very good question is not only that i i mean i keep uh, very very a uh, watch out for for the device but uh, you guys as technicians are are like family to me the way they reach out uh, the way they come up and check on the device, make sure the device is in working order, go through the device from pretty much head to toe and uh, be able to, to ensure me that that's in working order. It, it, it means a lot to me, but not only me to my family, because uh, 
every time I get in that device, I know that that device is, is, is it, it's safe for me to walk in and safe for me to pretty much walk as I want. And that's, that's very, very, I guess, meaningful. It's not just about uh, selling a device. It's, it's, it's more so, uh, I, I consider Rewalk as family. They not only sell a device, but they're like family to me. I mean, it's, it, 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 that's, that's probably been the biggest part of this whole thing uh, for me and my family, the gratification of, of, uh, of the continued support with the rewalk after, after being, after purchasing the device. Yeah. And we appreciate it because, because you've done a lot for people, you know, who've had injuries like yours in terms of being really a pioneer in these devices. I mean, you've been in it around for, you know, five years, really. It's a, uh, it's almost uh, strange to think of it as being that long, but you know, so that depth of history is there. Uh, and you know, it's, what's great. You've done a lot of work meeting newly injured. I know a number of times, you found other injured officers, even just through the news and, and reached out to them. Uh, so, you know, let them know that there's things for them. So I guess a one last kind of question and, and, you know, in respect of you do such a great job in outreach, you, you go out of your way to help other people and educate them. Um, what would you, what do you say to newly injured uh, folks who really have uh, the, the previous injury, they didn't know much about the treatment of SEI, probably. And, and now they're in this position and you're in contact with them. Uh, what would you say to an injured person when they start thinking about these things? It, to really research extensively, uh, be aggressive on your research, have the determination not to quit or give up as far as pursuing uh, an exoskeleton or any type of medical device because uh, being a paraplegic, quadriplegic, everything's an uphill battle for us. But the whole key is to have really that perseverance to not give up. I know it's, I mean, for some people, it's, it's, it's easier said than done, but um, we, we've come a long way as far as exoskeletons. And I see a big, bright future for us. I see the cost dramatically reducing in the near future for these exoskeletons. And I see it's, it's a bright future for quadriplegics and paraplegics, uh, but the willingness out of, as, out of everything is the willingness not to give up is key. Uh, I know sometimes we can, we can uh, look at things and we're just pretty much at a, uh, I mean, looking at a brick wall, but the mentality is, you know what, we can still crawl. We can figure out ways to get around that brick wall. And, and that's just the big thing is once you get past these hurdles, um, the sky's the limit. And then especially with, when it comes to rewalk and, and especially uh, the exoskeletons and, and rewalk being the forefront of the, of the exoskeletons and being a, a, a I guess a, a model for for technology uh, throughout the world for paraplegics and quadriplegics is is big. Yeah, no, that's that's it's great to hear that because I mean we have so many people who reach out to us and they. You know, they, they ask questions and, and we can certainly educate them on technology, but you can educate them on much, much more. So, you know, for all the work you've done, uh, both educating us on how these devices uh, should interact, how they're behaving. We try to stay in tune with you on, you know, what can we do better? What can we do different? Uh, you've been a great help. And for all you've done for those who are newly injured, uh, you've had direct effect on multiple people that have now been in the system because of your interaction. Uh, we thank you for that too. And, and certainly for your passion with the payers. Um, it, it, it means a lot. Great. Thank you. I, 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 can't, I can't thank you guys enough. And I'm going to continue to advocate. I, uh, I uh, travel throughout the country uh, all, all year long advocating for, for uh, injured workers. Um, and I'm going to keep doing it and just, just try and make the biggest difference I can for, for people that are in a wheelchair. And that's, that's my lifelong goal right now is to help, help people that really can't help themselves and really advocate for them even more to get them up and walking. And um, that's the most meaningful part for me. Great. Well, you know, thank you for everything you do. We look forward to even seeing more as you continue on your efforts and continue reaching out. Um, and for all the attendees, thank you for joining us. We will uh, record and shortly send out the recording to those who attended and those who couldn't. So uh, we do thank you for joining and certainly look out for more in the future as we uh, discuss different topics on future webinars. So on behalf of Rewalk, uh, thank you again, Jeremy, and uh, uh, we look forward to continuing to learn from you. Thank you. You guys have a good one.